Hi, my name is Maddie, and in today's watercolor basics video, I'm going to be talking all about how to mix greens. Green is my favorite color in the world, but it's the hardest one for me to mix the right shade. I know it can be really challenging painting with green, so that's why I did a lot of research into color theory and mixing greens, and I'm going to share everything I learned with you today. Don't forget, I make free art tip PDF guides every month, and there's one for this video. If you want to download the PDF, just go to the description below, click the link, enter your email, and if you want to subscribe, you can check either the art tips newsletter or my monthly newsletter and click submit. So let's just get started. So the most common problems when mixing green that I have, one, the results look unnatural, either too bright or too flat, two, um, problems seeing and mixing the just the right shade of green because greens can look different based on where they're placed. And three, having way too many options to choose from in your palette. So I'm going to talk about all three of these problems and what we can do to get better at mixing greens. So today I'm going to talk about the color green in terms of color theory and three different factors. The first one is saturation, which is how colorful and how vibrant a color is compared to just plain gray. And the second one is temperature or hue, which is um, how cool or warm the color is. So cool colors will be green, blue, and purple. Warm colors will be red, orange, and yellow. And within these colors, you can also have warm and cool uh, varieties, which is relative temperature. For example, you can have a more warm or cool green, depending on whether it goes closer to yellow or blue. And finally, we'll also talk about lightness or value. So this is just how dark or how light the, the green is. If you want a basic intro to color theory and color mixing with watercolor, definitely check out my video I made a couple months ago uh, all about color theory. Let's just start with the number one issue that people might have when painting with green, and that's how to keep your greens looking natural. Uh, sometimes they might look too bright and too unnatural. Or they might look a little bit too flat, and you're not really sure why. Uh, one way to avoid this is to mix your own green. So instead of using a pre-mixed green from your palette, you will use your own yellow and your own blue with a neutralizing shade like a red or purple. And you'll mix your own green. And the reason you do this is that it will add natural variation. So you have your palette and you're mixing yellow and blue. Sometimes you're going to put your brush down, it's going to be more yellow, sometimes it will be more blue. So this is just how green looks in nature. It's not one shade of the same premixed green. It's different variations. Nature is random, so your painting should have a little bit of randomness to it. And doing that will make it look a lot less flat and boring. You can also use premixed green if you want, but just add your own blues and yellows to it. So you're not just using one premixed green throughout the painting. Another way to keep your greens natural is to remember that in nature we don't see a lot of very, very saturated greens. So usually they'll be a lot more muted or less saturated than you might think. And especially with blue greens, those are going to be a lot less saturated than the bright yellow greens, such as like in a, a young plant or at the tips of a leaf, will be very saturated and other greens like a tree or a darker blue green plant will be a lot less saturated than you think. And another tip is that lighter greens are usually warmer than darker greens. So especially since lighter green usually means young plant or the sun is on it, so that's going to have a lot more yellow in it than a darker shade. So what you're going to want to do is not just use one shade from dark to light, but add the yellow to the, your light range of greens and add some blue to the dark greens as well as some red or neutralizing to make those a little bit less saturated. So the next problem is how do you see and mix the right green? So this is a problem with seeing green and knowing how to mix it. So when two greens are together or if green is in a context, it's really hard to isolate that in your mind and really understand what color you're looking at. Um, one way to isolate a color is to practice with a photo and the eyedropper tool in Photoshop. And this gives you a really cool tool because you have 
the color wheel, you can look at the saturation, hue, and lightness um, from a photo and start to recognize those in real life. Another analog way to do it is to just get an index card, white index card, cut a hole in the middle, and then when you put it up over your view, you'll have a little isolated hole where the color will show through compared to white, so you can see what that color really is without being distracted by all the colors around it. The best way to get good at this is just to practice. So a final problem is having way too many options in your palette. So I made this color chart because I wanted to see how many greens I could mix. I did this at the beginning of my journey with mixing greens. And so I thought I, I should just know what greens I can mix. And I used every yellow and every blue and then every green that comes pre-mixed and mixing those together and with blues and yellows. And there are so many options. So it was kind of overwhelming to me. Um, it was good to do this chart though because I had a good idea of where to start and comparing how these colors will look just as a base green. And so it's good to start with just one base green, but then there are still so many factors to consider like saturation, lightness, temperature. What I did is I created a simplified process for making these decisions. If you download the free PDF, I have made it into a graphic, a little flow chart that you can go through each step and choose what you're gonna add to your green. I'll go through the process. So first of all, you're going to start off with a base green. And I use my color chart to figure out where I want to start. And it doesn't have to be exactly like your color that you're going for, your goal green. Um, but it should just be the most similar. It should reflect how saturated you want your overall painting to be. So if you want a very saturated bright greens, then you should choose your base green made up of a cool yellow and a cool blue or even a warm yellow and a cool blue or vice versa one warm and one cool if saturation is not your main goal then you can do a warm blue and a warm yellow just know that down the road you can't really add anything to make it more saturated so step two now we're going to adjust the temperature or the hue of your green. So looking at your base green compared to your goal, you're going to add either blue or yellow to make it the right temperature. The next step is to make the color lighter or darker. So comparing to your goal, you'll make your base lighter by adding more water or darker by adding more blue and more neutral color like red or burnt sienna or purple. If you're on the light range, of your color, you will want to add more yellow to make it more saturated because adding at a certain point, adding more water will make it less saturated because you're showing more white of the paper through the color. So finally, you're going to look at this color and see if that's good, if that's enough, if it looks like your goal. If not, then maybe you need to vary the saturation, make it more muted and less saturated by adding red or your neutralizing color. Um, you may need to add more blue or yellow to change the temperature up again. You're just gonna have to experiment with your greens, keep a little journal of each swatch that you've mixed with notes. You will get good at mixing greens, I promise. When you're mixing greens in the painting, a good thing to try is, for any painting, for any colors, using the same three or four colors. So. For my paintings, both of these I used the same yellow, a blue, and a complementary color for the neutralizer. So I used lemon yellow, cobalt blue, for one I used burnt sienna, and the other one permanent rose. So now I'm going to use my method of choosing my greens and do a complete painting of a fern. And this is a polypodium vulgare, and I was inspired by this botanical illustration that's in the public domain, so I wanted to do a study of it, but with different greens based on photos. So to start off this painting, I needed to choose my base green, so I stayed inside this square, which is just yellows mixing with blues, because I didn't want to use any pre-mixed green, just for the principle for this painting. And I like the cobalt and lemon yellow mix, just off the bat, but I did do three tests of possible base color greens, uh, I did one with cadmium pale and cobalt. 
cadmium pale cerulean and lemon yellow and cobalt and i liked both of the lemon yellow cobalt and the cadmium yellow pale with cerulean those were both nice and saturated and so to test which one i really wanted to use i did a little test of all the values to see if i could really get dark darks with the cadmium pale and cerulean which i suspected would be hard and so i decided to go with the lemon yellow and cobalt because that had a bigger range of values so for every painting that i'm planning when i'm trying to choose my green i'll keep a little list of swatches as a little journal with the numbers of the colors that I used. And the first one will be the base green that I've chosen, and then I'll experiment with adding more yellow or blue, making it lighter or darker, and also desaturating it with the complementary color. And once I have this little row of swatches, then I can look at it and assess if I want to use that for my painting, and also know as I'm painting, if I want a, this shade or that shade, I can see how I made it before. And if you look at my palette for this painting, I'm keeping blue, yellow, and the neutralizing um, permanent rose in separate corners of the square because I want to have natural variation when I paint. So when I'm starting the base shapes, I start on the edges of the leaf with more yellow, and then as I get closer to the center where there's shadows, and also where the leaf is darker in true color, I'll add more blue and a little bit more of the red. And since I have them ready to go on the palette, I just dip into one area or another, and then return my brush and com continue painting wet into wet, and that way I don't have to have separate mixes. I can combine them all and they all have the same amount of water. So I started with the base layer which was just a nice gradient from a yellow green to a more blue green. And once I did that it was just time to add shadows and details and then more shadows and more details and at one point it wasn't saturated enough so I did a glaze of the really yellow green on top and it was a pretty simple task once I had chosen my green in the beginning. So much for watching. I hope this was helpful and I hope you're inspired to go paint with greens now. Don't forget you can access the free PDF guide which is a supplement to this video. When you're doing that just check the box art tips and resources if you'd like to have a free PDF guide sent to you every month. So that's all for now. See you next time and stay lovely. Bye.